Hi folks, it's Michelle with Keto is Life and today we're going to take a, a look at five more burning questions that people are asking me. So, number one, I weigh myself multiple times a day. How did I gain three pounds overnight? Well, first of all, quit abusing your scale. Um, weighing multiple times a day will do nothing but mess with your confidence in your head. If you must weigh, I suggest once a week in the morning, generally after you pee. You want to do it the same time every week. And that will give you a better indication. Uh, secondly, yeah, you can gain up to five pounds overnight, sometimes more. Uh, this depends on many factors like inflammation, too many carbs the night before, alcohol, over-exercising, food sensitivities, and of course that time of the month. Um, it isn't true weight, it's water. You can't gain uh, three pounds of fat overnight, so just relax, drink your water, and keto on. And weight loss also is never linear. So you're going to go up and down and up and down. Uh, as long as you're maintaining a downward trend, we're cool. Number two, the question is, I see you fast frequently. It seems unhealthy and stupid. Explain how this can be good. Angry face emoji. <laughs> So that was mean, <laughs> but everybody is allowed to have their opinion. Uh, fasting is a personal choice. For me, fasting allows my body to harness uh, autophagy and regulate my hormone levels. Since I was morbidly obese uh, for mo most of my life, these levels have taken years to correct. Uh, fasting brings my levels back to a baseline and gives them a chance to do what they were meant to do um, naturally. Uh, autophagy allows my cells to clear out kind of the old unused broken cell parts uh, that are just hanging out. Um, you can research this uh, in a lot more depth and detail if you're interested. Uh, all you have to do is of course Google it. <laughs> autophagy. Um, I don't fast because I have an eating disorder uh, or because I want to be super duper skinny. Uh, sometimes I'll fast for 12 hours, sometimes 16, 24. Sometimes I fast for longer than that. I usually plan for it, uh, but it depends on my day, my schedule, um, what's going on in my life as well. Uh, and it took a lot of time and a lot of practice to be able to comfortably fast past 24 hours. Uh, it really is a mind game uh, that you have to learn how to um, deal with. Being fat adapted does help and my body has plenty of body fat to feed off of uh, during the times that I do fast. So. Yay, happy face. Um, number three, three. What is insulin and why is it such a big deal? What does it do? So it's not really a mystery. You could also Google this as well if you really want to know what insulin was. Insulin is a hormone and it's an important one at that. It's secreted by your pancreas. Um, which is kind of midline here. Uh, its job is to help store sugar uh, in its most basic form uh, that's removed from the bloodstream, effectively regulating blood sugar levels. It's a big deal because when you eat carbs, your body produces insulin to remove the glucose from your blood. So if you have too many carbs, that equals too much insulin that is released, which in turn can lead to insulin resistance and eventually type 2 diabetes. So um, 
it's a domino effect too. You know what else this domino effect does? It can raise your bad cholesterol. It can lower your good cholesterol, raise your triglycerides, and really majorly uh, increase your inflammation throughout your whole body. So big deal. And that's what it does. Hope that helps. All right, so number four. So let's go look at some notes. So this question says, my trainer told me that no matter what diet I was on, I had to keep my calories at 1,200 a day if I wanted to lose weight. Is this true? So calories, I get so many calorie questions, uh, and especially from uh, fitness related, you know, people. So this is a tricky question. Uh, on a sad diet, standard American diet, um, this is torture. You will be hungry and at the mercy of your blood sugar. Um, on a low carb, high fat diet or a ketogenic diet, you'll be satiated and won't have those roller coaster blood sugar spikes. So comparatively, you'll eat more fat, which has more calories per gram, but you will naturally not have to eat as often once you're into ketosis or once you're fat adapted. Um, I found by my own research and research of some of my clients that if you follow your macros even loosely like not even militantly I maintain a calorie range well below a level needed to lose weight so and additionally I find that I can work out better in the morning like if I go work out in the morning without even eating Whereas on the sad diet, I could have never done that. I would have been highly distracted. My blood sugar would have been bottomed out. Um, and I would not have had a good workout. So to answer the question, one, uh, yes, calories do matter. You can, you can still gain weight on keto. Um, that amount of fat still has calories. And if you're knocking back a a huge amount of fat that you don't need, meaning you're eating fat, just eat the fat even when you're not hungry. You will still, you'll gain weight. Uh, two, keto helps with appetite suppression naturally, so you will eat less if you pay attention to your body. Um, and of course, plateaus are going to happen, especially the closer you get to goal. I don't think people understand that they get so upset. You know, I've got five more pounds to lose and I'm at a plateau. Well, of course you are. Your body is fighting for those last five pounds and it's going to take longer. So dropping your calories isn't necessarily always going to help. You know, I've seen people drop their calories to like six, seven hundred calories a day. Oh my God, you must be miserable. I couldn't do that. So, um, you know, try to maintain keto, tweak your numbers. You hit a plateau, cut out your dairy for a little while, you know, um, Play with your play with your macros. Play with your carbs. You know, sometimes increasing your carbs will help. Sometimes, you know, not doing any kind of cardio for a while will help because cardio, you know, it, it always makes me more inflamed. So um, it'll stop fat burning because it re you're releasing cortisol. So anyway, that's number four. Hope that helped. And finally, last but not leastly, number five. And this comes from a friend of mine who is not science oriented. And I already answered this for her, but I thought, oh, maybe somebody else doesn't know it. So number five is what is a triglyceride and should that number be high or low? So I'm a uh, clinical lab tech and... Um, Triglycerides are part of your lipid panel. A triglyceride 
is a fat molecule in your blood. So having too many of these, I'm going to really simplify it here, having too many of these uh, in your blood automatically elevates your risk for heart disease, stroke, um, all that bad stuff. So diets high in refined carbs um, can increase these levels exponentially. Um, an optimal range that you want is like 100 to 150 uh, milligrams per deciliter or lower. And lower is always going to be better for triglycerides. Um, my last triglyceride on my last lipid panel uh, when I was admitted to the hospital um, was 46. That's awesome. It's awesome. So how do we de decrease these uh, triglyceride levels? So you can do moderate exercise. That always helps. Eating fish or flaxseed, flaxseed oil, anything that's got a good omega-3 fatty acid in it, that always helps. And of course, lowering your carb intake is going to help too. So, and it doesn't happen overnight, of course. You know, it takes a little bit of time, but consistency, you know, that's, that's all it does. It, it, uh, it just takes consistency, and your numbers will change for the better. So that does it for today's five random questions. I hope it helped, and I will be seeing y'all again very soon. Keto on, y'all. Bye.